I, DeAndre Smith here, and I'm very excited to show you um, the ins and outs and the foundation behind solving inequalities. Um, so without further ado, let's go to the board. So in this lesson, we're going to cover four topics. We're going to cover the philosophy behind the inequality, important things to know about inequalities, graphing inequalities, and last, we're going to get into solving some inequality problems. Now let's take a moment to understand the philosophy behind the inequality. Now in the equation, uh, we learned that we have one solution. Um, but in an inequality, uh, we can have several solutions or we can have a range of solutions. So for example, imagine that we are in our favorite algebra class and our teacher says that in order to get an A, we have to have higher than a 90 percent. So that means that 91, 92, 93, all the way up to 100 is acceptable. So how we would indicate that using the inequality, um, if we will allow x to equal to get an a, and we will allow our greater than sign to represent the score must be greater than. So therefore our inequality would be x is greater than 90. Um, so all together this reads to get an A, your score must be greater than 90. Now we're going to talk about some important things that you need to know in regards to inequalities. So first, we need to learn the symbols. So the first symbol is the less than symbol, the greater than symbol, the less than or equal to symbol, the greater than or equal to symbol, and the equal symbol. Next, we're going to take the time to look at how to place the mouth of the inequality. So in the inequality all of those symbols um, had a sort of like mouth character. Um, so if we form this symbol into a mouth, the mouth is always going to eat the greatest amount. So it doesn't matter how the um, the wording of the inequality is phrased, as long as we understand that the mouth is always going to point to the greatest amount, um, then we should be fine. Alright, so for example, if we say 26 is greater than or equal to x, we are suggesting that 26 is the largest number. So therefore, the mouth of the symbol is going to point to the 26. So 26 is greater than or equal to x. The next example is less than or equal to. So if we say a is less than or equal to some number, we are suggesting that that some number is the greatest amount. So the mouth is going to point to that some number. So we have a is less than or equal to some number. Now let's get into graphing some inequalities. So for example, if I had x is greater than 2, I'm suggesting that x, or our range of values for answers, is greater than 2. So when we graph inequalities, normally we use a norm number line. So I place the number 2 on the number line. But in our solution, we're saying that 2 cannot be a part of the solution. So therefore, we indicate this with an open dot. And we shade in the rest of the values that x can be. Now if we do x is less than or equal to 2, we are suggesting that all of our range of values for x is numbers that is less than 2. So we'll draw a number line. Now this time 2 can be a part of our solution. So we indicate that 2 is a part of the solution by using the closed dot. Now let's go into solving some inequalities. Now solving inequalities is very similar to solving equations. So if on some of the concepts you are a bit confused on, you may want to review the video um, like a balance scale, like a mirror, um, solving equations. But without further ado, let's get to this problem. So x minus 7 is less than 3. So in order to isolate x, we will use the addition principle. So therefore we're going to add 7 to both sides. Once 
Once we add 7 to both sides, we get x is less than 10. So we can um, indicate this on a graph by putting the number 10 on a number line. Notice I used an open dot because 10 cannot be a part of the solution. Now if we wanted to put this in set notation, how we would do it is we would put a parenthesis and we would include the lowest value, which is 10, comma, and put the highest value, which is positive infinity. Notice I used the parenthesis because that shows an open dot, which means that 10 cannot be in the solution. We'll see more of this in, in more examples. Now in this example, uh, we are going to perform the multiplication principle, but the coefficient in front of the variable is negative. So that means that in our last step, after we perform our multiplication principle, our inequality sign is going to switch sides. Okay, again, this is very important because this is the only difference in solving inequalities in respect to solving equations. When the number in front of the variable is negative, you're always going to change the side of the inequality sign. So let's do that. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And we get that x which originally was less than or equal to, now it's going to be greater than or equal to positive 2. So now if we were to graph this, notice I use a closed dot. A closed dot, again, it indicates that the solution can be 2. So therefore, if we write this in set notation, instead of using a parenthesis, we'll use a bracket and put our lowest value, which is 2, and our highest value, which is positive infinity. Now in this example, I have x over 3 is greater than 1. So to solve this problem, again, I'm going to use the multiplication principle and multiply both sides by 3. And now I get x is greater than 3. So this graphically is going to be an open dot and then set notation is going to be our lowest value, which is 3, to positive infinity. Now in this example, we have a quantity. So remember from that solving equations um, lesson, uh, when we have a quantity, it's the same as doing the distributive law. So we will distribute the 4 to the x and to the 1. And our new solution now becomes 4x plus 4 is less than 2x plus 3. Now we want to isolate x. So we want to get everything with x on one side and all of the other stuff on the other side. So we'll start off by subtracting 2 from both sides. Now that I have 2x plus 4 is less than 3, now I want to get the 4 on the other side of the inequality so I can further isolate x. So I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. Now that I have 2x is less than negative 1, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. So now I have x is less than negative 1 half. 
Now, I know at home you may be asking, well, why didn't I switch the inequality sign? But the reason I didn't is because the coefficient in front of the variable is not negative. The only time that I switch the signs is if the coefficient in front of the variable is negative. So therefore, my graph would be all numbers less than negative one half and my set notation would be all numbers from negative infinity up until negative one half with the parentheses. In this example we have all fractions. So once again from the solving equations video we know that we can clear all fractions by using the clear fraction method. So we will multiply by our least common denominator. In this case our least common denominator will be 10. So we will multiply this whole problem by the number 10. Now in this step, uh, we now have to bust the quantity, uh, which we will perform the distributive law. Now we will perform the addition principle to isolate x. So I'll start off with adding 6 to both sides, and then next I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Now in this step, notice that the coefficient in front of the variable x is negative. So that means I'm going to have an inequality sign change. So I get x is less than or equal to 4. This graphically... going to be all values such that x is less than 4 and using set notation we're going to take our lowest value which is negative infinity and have it go to our highest value which is 4 with the bracket. I hope that this lesson was able to help you um, with those problems that asked you to solve inequalities. Um, as always, if you need any additional material, feel free to contact me um, by email or by phone. Thank you.